Anyways, so now down to the brass tacks of these reefs. Um, what you have to do in order to conquer them, per se, is basically just what I'm doing here. You have to take out all the cannon boats, you have to take out all the cannons on the walls. And like I said, these cannons won't actually appear until you've beaten the monstrous Helmarok King in the Forsaken Fortress. So you have to do that first. I think I remember actually coming here in a previous video and just being all shocked, like, what the hell, there ain't no cannons here. And then I looked it up, and for show, for show enough, for show enough. Uh-oh, dark storm clouds are billowing in. Jesus. Not gonna crumb, come across the thing, are we? Okay. Yeah. And the amount of cannons in the reef will depend on, like, the number of eyes in the reef, I guess. Like, Cyclops Reef, I think, probably has the least cannons, and as you, they get more eyes in their reefs, because each reef has a certain amount of eyes in its name, and you'll see what I mean. Uh, yeah, that's another thing. I have to get the chart for this island, too. The sea chart from the merman. But that should be the least of my concerns right now. Alrighty. Yeah, and once you've gotten all the things uh, deleted, I mean destroyed, you'll have seen that chest appear up there. And the only way up there is to go on the borders and walk a long way. Sometimes it's not too long. Like right here, I think we can probably... Yeah, it looks like a deck leaf, deck leaf down there if the wind is in my favor. What was that in the distance? Oh, that's just a flag. I thought that was some like massive icy wind or something. It looked scary. Hallelujah. And just like that, the wind is in our favor, and we can go claim our treasure. And these treasure charts that they get at the reefs are especially special because of a certain... I don't know. I think every single treasure chart that you get from the, re from the reefs, because you will get a treasure chart at every single one, I'm pretty sure, they will lead to a treasure, and instead of that treasure being a heart piece or a silver rupee like it normally is, it's just another chart, like not another treasure chart, but a, a, like a special red chart. Like there's some like submarine charts, platform charts, stuff like that. And it's just like, it's really weird, I don't know. So you definitely want to open those up like as soon as possible. Like I'm actually going to open that one up right now. Mm. You especially want to open these ones up really fast because sometimes, I think it might be totally randomized where all the treasure charts are, but I know I've had certain times where I get a treasure chart at a reef, and the treasure that's shown on that is actually at that reef, which is really, like, very uncommon. At least I think it's pretty uncommon to have that happen where a treasure chart is at the island that you found it on. Which is, it's just totally mind trippy. But it can happen, I believe. Right now, where's that fish? Did I see him over here? Yeah, he's splashing his way over here. Sploosh! Man, you need to be easier to find sometimes, remember, man. Like, I found you super easy this time by pure blind luck, but... You're such a small white pinprick of your splash off in the distance sometimes. You're really hard to notice. You need to get more chubby, you need to, you need to eat more pork loins, and gain some mass. Two eye reef, there you go. Yeah, and I think it goes from one to six eye reef. There's six of them. I tell you, lately no one around these waters has seen the beautiful fairy who bestows magic power. She used to live here, Fry. All anyone sees anymore are the big octos that have been appearing lately. Yeah, put two and two together and you'll get my my little intro from what should be last episode by now. Jeez. Yep, yeah, so that big octo is at this square. It's just a matter of finding him. I nor what I normally like to do, since there are ac actually platforms at this uh in this square too is I like to go to the platforms first and sort of like scout out where the big octo is from that platform, unless I can see it from... Is that it over there? I don't know, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere off to the west of the actual island, so keep that in mind. If you don't give a damn about these platforms, then just go find that on your own. But I do give a damn, and I'm going pretty stupidly against the wind here, but that's kind of nice. You know, just a nice nighttime sail. Nice and slow and leisurely. You gotta admire this ocean for what it is. It's big and vast and beautiful and I don't know. Symbolizes endless hope. I'm just getting corny on you now. Alright. Now this platform here is like one of the weirdest platforms. Actually this square in general is like the weirdest square. And this platform is no exception to it. 
like aside from being a cyclops or not a cyclops reef but just a reef in general which are weird islands to begin with just the principle because there's like so many of them and there's like well, what are they here for why are there so, why are they being guarded so heavily it's just like all this mystery surrounding them damn there's a lot of these guys but then you throw in like this square it's especially weird because you look like look at this platform there's ice there's ice on this platform and like not only is it the only platform where there's ice i'm pretty sure anyways it's also like one of the most one of the southernmost platforms so you'd think that it wouldn't have any ice at all because it wouldn't be cold enough to formulate ice this far south unless like s unless like we're actually south of the equator right now the hyrulean equator and it oh damn it you know i'm going after that golden feather i don't care I'm, oh, let me get it, please. Don't make me jump down here in vain. Yes. Okay. Now let's head back up, back up there, and reap the spoils of what we actually set out to do. Yeah. So I don't know. It's really weird that way. And on top of that, you've got the big octo in this square, which there aren't many of those in the game to begin with. So again, pretty weird, right? And then, furthermore, <laughs> what a dumb word. Yeah, that's that's such a word you you use when you want to sound fancy. When you want a fancy talk. Mm, ooh, we got the sunrise. Can I spot that? I hear the music, but... Oh, it's probably over there, then. Rise, beautiful sun. Ah, I'm not gonna... <laughs> watching the sunrise is like watching grass grow, except it's quite a bit more beautiful. Yes, yeah, so you got the big octo. But instead of housing, like, a, a heart piece, or rupees, or anything like a normal big octo... No, he houses a great fairy! And... Wait, wait a minute, there's more! That great fairy, well, you'll, you'll find out here in a second, I, I'm actually gonna... <laughs> I know I already spoiled it last episode, what she, like, gives you, but I'm just gonna let it play out on its own here, just because... <laughs> just because it's so funny, and so randomly odd. Oh, look, it's storming, too. It's kinda nice. Alright, so, somewhere in this general vicinity, there should be... a swarm of seagulls around somewhere. Might as well get out my telescope. Don't, that thing doesn't see much use. Anyways, there you go. See right over there. There's a whole bunch of seagulls. Let's head their way, because we know what that means. Mm. Oh, and I forgot to mention that this is also, um, I'm going to use my cannon this time, because I've, I've been using the boomerang on these guys a bunch, and I figure I might as well show off that the cannon does work too. It's just a lot harder for me. But it does take out the eyes in one hit, which is in one hit, which is really nice. I'm just not very good at aiming it. Yeah, but another thing that's weird about this is that this big octo is the only one in the game with four eyes, the least of any big octo. But it still has, like, debatably, it has the best reward of any of the big octos. And you'll see that in a minute here. But it's just insane. This square is the weirdest thing I've ever come across. But just because it's a Zelda game, everyone discounts it. But no, it's weird, even in terms of a Zelda game. In terms of this Zelda game, it's just, it just sticks out like a sore thumb. It's insane. Like, watch this. Oh, it zooms in. Oh, no, there's no treasure ring. It's a fairy. Not like we didn't know that. Still, oh, waker of the winds. Thanks to you, I've been freed from that beast's foul grasp. As thanks, I shall give you just a little of my power. No different from any other great fairy. Right. I mean, it's still weird, but <laughs> because it's just because it's a great fairy. And they're just weird by nature. They're innately weird, but here we go. <laughs> look! Look at him! Look at this happy! Oh god, no! <laughs> you have twice as... Oh god, just, just, just let that sink in for a second. Oh, that's hilarious. It's like, that's the next, that's the, like, the, just the cherry on top, man. Is that you expect him to hold up a bomb bag or a quiver or something. But no, he just thrusts his arms in the air like he just don't care. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm the man. I'm the freaking boss. And it's just, it's just too perfect. Like, this island is strange, it's unique, it's weird, and I love it, and I don't know why I'm critically reviewing it for you all like this. Like, I'm trying to sell you on the island like it's real estate or something, but that's just my two cents on it. Now that we're out of this fun house of an island, of a square, of a sector, of whatever you want to call it, 
Let's go ahead and warp somewhere else, somewhere fresh and new. Um, you know, I'm gonna show this off. I think I'm probably gonna end this recording off pretty soon here. Actually, I still have like another 10 minutes to fill if I wanna round out episodes of three.